Hello and welcome to the class today. Today I'm going to show you how to draw straight hair. But to keep it interesting, we're going to draw it in a plait. It's going to be a nice fun class, nothing too stressful. Um, yeah, I think you're going to enjoy it. Let me show you what the what the sketch or the, what the photo looks like. And then we'll sketch it out from there. Alrighty. So I found this photo on Pixabay. It was a really good study, nice lighting on the hair. Which is going to help me explain all the different parts of it. So what I did then do is I, I converted it to grayscale like this, because that then just makes it easier to to reference from your, your to get your tonal values right when you're drawing. So that's the sketch template which comes in inside the PDF. If you're a patron, you can go and download the PDF off the website. The link is in the description below. So you can now just use that just to draw the main outline. So basically what I would draw in a situation like this is just transition points. Let's use that to point with. So like here or here, here, you can you know, especially with a plant, it's quite easy to to get those transitions because you've got these little, almost little blocks of of hair here and here, and then I would also draw like distinct, you know, very prominent bits. If there's a maybe a prominent um, lock of hair, I would go and draw that as well. So the most important thing. When you're drawing hair, is to realize that hair clumps together. In other words, you don't have to draw every single strand of hair. That's not necessary. Because the hair clumps together and the hair is so super fine, you can't see each individual strand. So all we're going to do is create the impression of each strand. So here you can see there's like there. Can you see there's like a clump of hair? There's another clump of hair over there. There's a smaller clump of hair. So is there. There's a there's sort of a another clump over there. Here is is a group of hair. Inside that group, there's little clumps. Can you see there? There, there, there. Lots of little clumps of hair. And that's what we're going to be drawing today. So then the next important thing that you need to look out for are tonal values. Your head is round. So the the hair is going to follow the shape of the head, right? So in this case, we can see the light is coming from the left to the right. So the hair on the left hand side is lighter than the hair on the right hand side. So can you see here, it's really bright. They're sort of mid-tone colors. And here's shadow colors. So each of these bits of hair, as they twist and curl, are going to get less or more light. So you have to take care of that because that shows you that shape of the head. And if you don't do that, what happens is then all your hair looks flat. And it makes the whole head look flat. Next thing is, you've got different hair colors, and you, here you can see it quite nicely. There's, there's, she's got a bit of. Let's let's get the color photo back. It's going to be easier to see that. Can you see this hair here is physically lighter than that hair over there? Maybe she's had some highlights put in or something at some point. So you have to look out for that. Obviously, when you're drawing with graphite, you can't show the colors. So all you can show is different tonal values. So you've got to look out for that as well. Because now take a look. Here's a lighter. Let's maybe put both of them next to each other. Then we can see the color and the and the and the black and white for a for a short while. Can you see this hair here is a different color to that, right? So now if we go to here, you can see that the tonal value of this one is different to that. But now because it's curling and turning, you get a difference in tonal value from 
there to there. You're going to highlight a midtone and a shadow in, in, in that. You're going to highlight a midtone and a shadow in that. But because they're different colors, the tonal value changes. So this one's highlight is not the same tonal value as that one's highlight. This one's midtone value is not the same as that one's midtone value. And the same goes for the shadow. Can you see that? So you, you can't just draw, like I've got these different locks over here. Each one's highlight, midtone, and shadow the exact same tonal value because then it'll flatten it out again. So you've got to look out for that as you draw. Okay. So I've just sketched out those basic transitions there so that I know where all the different plats are and so on. So as usual, I like to lay down that, that bit of tonal value first. And I think with the hair, it's especially important to do that because you're going to be positively and negatively drawing the hair. So what do I mean by that? You're going to be drawing stuff and you're going to be erasing stuff alternately. So I've taken just a standard piece of paper and here I've got a, a 9B graphite stick, but you can use any dark pencil, any soft pencil, like a 6B, 8B, anything like that. So speaking of which, before I forget, let's just pop down that over there so that you can know what pencil I'm using. In other words, if I'm using a white pencil, I'm using a 2H. If I'm using a green pencil, then you know I'm using an HB. So I've just taken this and I've scratched it over the paper and I've filled this whole paper up with graphite. So that's given me a layer of essentially loose graphite on here. And I'm going to use a cloth and I'm going to just pick up some of that graphite. So that's now on the cloth and I'm going to wipe it off onto my drawing. So I think what I'll first do is you've got an overall tonal value over the entire area. Even though you've got, you do have highlights, but if I add a, an overall tonal value over everything over here, that will instantly separate this from the background. And it will give instantly give me some tonal value that I can erase and do any sketches and plotting out with. And I'll often do that if you don't feel like doing this like drawing kind of work up front. You can use the, your cloth, add a layer of tonal value onto your paper, and then use your eraser to do your sketch work. And what's cool about that is this layer of graphite that you're adding here, I'm not pressing hard, I'm pressing really soft. I'm rather just adding multiple passes with a cloth to, to build up sort of layers of, of graphite on the paper. And because I'm not pressing hard, it's not going into the weave of the paper. It's just lying gently on top. So I can erase this back down to white paper at any stage if I wanted to. So if you do make a mistake with your with your sketching, for example, maybe I I've done a sketch a sketch line like that, and I'm not happy with it. It's wrong. I just go over it and look there. In an instant, it's gone. So that gives you nice a way to do your sketch work without dirtying the paper without having construction lines still showing through at the end of the day. Right, I think you can see over there, I'm giving it a just a fair little bit of uh, layer, just an even layer of tonal value. And that's given me something to, to start off with. Right, so I'm now just going to give this guy another scratch, this paper, to get a, some more graphite on there. 
Because now what we're going to do is we want to um, give it extra little shadings to give ourselves an idea of the shape of the head and the, the different plaits. So this time, instead of just using the whole cloth like this, I'm going to put my finger inside and, and hold it like that, because now I can work a little bit more accurately. So a good place to start would be, say, here, because we can see that this here is dark. So let's add extra graphite over here. So I think of this as my, my planning stage. I'm just plotting out what, what I need and what I feel is going to happen where. So I can see it's dark over here and I can see the hairs going in this direction. There's a little fold where this bunch of hair and that bunch of hair go over and it's forming a little bit of a, a shadow over there in that little triangle area over there. So these aren't the correct tonal values or anything, but it's, it's just making things easier for me to visualize as I start drawing. Because I can, within, within minutes, quickly get a basic feel for what's happening on this drawing. It's darker over there. Here, that little plate over there is uh, casting a shadow over there. Or maybe this is darker here. Over here. No, that seems more like a shadow, eh? If I look on the if I look on the color photo, it seems to be a little bit more of a shadow over there. Okay. There's a nice little shadow there. Really dark over there. Hi to everybody that's uh, just joined us. So can you can you sort of visualize an out of focus version of the of the photo here? So as I'm putting it down, what I want you to do is try and imagine where you would put these lines. It's also quite dark over here. Here's quite a bit of really quite dark in this area. So I can continue building that up quite a bit. Alright, so while we add it, we may as well, let's do that shoulder. And there's a bit of a shoulder strap or a, a bit of a blouse or something over there that we can see. And here we've got some of the face. So that skin also needs a, a bit more color over here. So we'll darken that up. So as you're doing this, if you find that you're going to start losing your uh, your initial sketch lines, then just take your take your eraser and just establish them again, like that. Okay. 
so that you don't lose them. Quite crazy to think that this is going to end up as a as a drawing, eh? It <laughs> always starts off look, looking like nothing. Um, Jeff is asking, is it out of focus? No, it's just because I'm adding just um, shadings of of color here. There, there's no detail yet, so that's why it looks out of focus. What you're creating here is the mass of hair. And out of that mass comes the detail. I'm just establishing where are my highlights, where are my shadows. And that gives me a feel for the shape. The shape. When I'm done, it should it should look like an out of focus head over here. All right, so as you can see, I've even gone ended up going over the lines and stuff. At this stage, that doesn't matter. You just take your your kneaded eraser and you can clean it up. It's not a problem. Everything at this point is hundred percent erasable. So it's really quick and easy to, to clean that up. And look there, just as I've done that already, you've got just that touch more definition over there. You see that, Jeff? Alrighty. Now, I'm going to just take... You can take any eraser. If you've got just a standard eraser and you haven't got one of these uh, pen-shaped erasers, then all you do is just take the eraser. I'm just digging mine out here. Just take the eraser and, and use your knife and just chop off. Let me just put something down there to protect my drawing. Just chop off a piece like this. And all you need to do is just use that piece over there. Or you can use that. What you're looking for is a, is a sharp edge that you can work with. So I'm going to use my, my pen shaped eraser and what I'm going to do now is now I'm just going to get a feel for the directions of the hairs. We've got a base going down there now. So now we can get a feel for the, just for the directions. So still all I'm doing is just plotting things out. So I want to get a feel for how do these hairs curl as we as it moves around the as it moves around the head. And why am I using a eraser, not a pencil? Because if I make a mistake, I can use my cloth and erase the line. Just by rubbing back over it again. So it makes it really quite easy. And and stress free by doing it this way. Because you're never afraid to make mistakes because you know you can fix them. So over these locks you must take a look the the, the directions 
can, can be quite different. Maybe they'll come out straight over here and then they'll curl down. And then these curls here would, would differ. So add as many lines. And, and like this lock over here, take a look. It's got lines that are coming out over here like this. And there is hair that's tucking in under this. So those directions are doing are doing that. If your razor gets dirty, I usually just uh, just give it a wipe on my shirt or my on my pants. It seems like that. And that guy runs out like this. Uh, Francois is using what asking what paper do I use? Um, just standard photocopy paper will do for for this exercise, uh, Francois, because you've got this is just a it's just a practice drawing. It's not something that you necessarily going to frame. If it's something that you do want to frame, then I, I recommend using a, a bit of a heavier paper, but a smooth paper. When you're doing portraits, stick to smooth paper. Don't use paper that has a uh, texture to it. Because skin is smooth. So if you've got a texture, then you have to try and... And the, the texture of the paper adds... It creates its own highlights and shadows. So then you find yourself having to try and compete with those little humps and bumps on the paper to get your shadings right. All right, can you, let's just hold my hand there so the, the camera's still battling to focus because everything that we've drawn so far is out of focus. So can you see how instantly you've got a good feel for how everything looks? You, you can start to imagine, just by adding those lines in, you can start to imagine the roundings and the shape of these plates. So that's pretty cool, hey? All right, so now I'm going to go over to a pencil and I'll, I'll start right off the bat with, with, a, with a decent pencil, you know, a 4B or a, a 6B. So you can use either the chisel point or the standard point pencil. If you're using the chisel point, make sure it's nice and sharp. And you're not using the flat end like this. You're using that sharp end over there. Because what we're now going to create is we're going to use these lines that we've plotted out. And we're going to start creating a hair effect. And all these previous little markings that you made are going to guide you. So I'm going to... Just for interest sake, I'm going to use just a standard point today. Um, when you're using a standard point, as you draw, keep turning the pencil in your hand like this. And what that does is it keeps that point of yours nice and sharp. You can see my hands are already getting dirty from the, from the cloth and so on. So I'm going to take you just a sheet of transparency. I put my hand over that, and that way I'm not going to dirty that over there. All right, so I'm going to start, say, over here. Can you see it's nice and dark over there? And I'm just going to use flicks. No, that one isn't dark enough, so let's go to something darker. We'll go over to, say, uh, an 8B. What I'm trying to do while I'm using a really hard or a really dark pencil, a soft pencil, is I want to create a hair effect, but I don't want to be pressing hard. I 
I still want to be able to erase this if necessary. And now to create this here effect, I'm just using flicks. I'm flicking the, the pencil like that. No pressure on the pencil whatsoever. The longer the hair, the longer the flick. Now, can you see what I'm doing? I'm not using, I'm, sometimes I'm using my finger, but I'm also, when it's a long hair, I'm using my whole hand. So here, it's curling like this. So as I flick, I'm, I'm using my whole arm and I'm curving it like that. Here, it's dark over here, light over there. So I'm gonna flick from the dark into the light. As you do, keep checking the directions. Okay, so now I've got from the dark into the light. Now I can go add a few more from the light into the dark. Keep checking these directions of your hairs. It's really important that you get those directions right. If something's curving a lot, like for example here, it's curving this way and then it's coming back like an S. Um, Renee is asking what pencil am I using? You can always check what pencil I'm using by the legend at the top. Can you see this is a black pencil? So the, the black over there on the screen is telling you I'm using an 8B pencil. So whatever color pencil I'm using is, is, is what... Uh, what value it is then because like here it's an S so I'll do the flicks like this on the one part of the S and then I'll go come back in the other direction and add those flicks in that direction so in general you want to start from the dark and go into the light Because you f when you're flicking, when you start, you're putting your pencil solid down on the paper, right? And as you flick, your 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 pencil lifts up off the off the paper, so you get a a free shading by doing that. So that's why you start here by the dark, and then work into the light. Remember to keep turning that pencil all the while. If an area does now go a little bit too dark, then what you what you see it needs to be. Don't panic too much. That's why we're using the the soft pencil and no pressure on the pencil. It's more important that you create that hair effect. Then get the tonal value spot on for now. Tonal values will come. We've created ourselves the basic tonal values, so we won't lose them. When we when we did the cloth right in the beginning. So those tonal values are always still just shining through.
and don't forget to turn your pencil all the while every few strokes just give him a little turn eventually you start doing it with all your drawings out of habit without even thinking about it and if you can get that right where each of your or after each few strokes you're turning the pencil that's great you'll find you can draw so much longer without having to sharpen pencils Uh, let's see, I've got one or two more questions here, let me just uh, scroll up. Okay, so Janet was just asking about the paper, I answered that, and then Diane is asking, are you using the back of the glossy photo paper? No, 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 this is just standard photocopy paper that I'm working on today. Right, let's go back up to here. Start adding some texture over there. So once you get going, you'll see that this this stage can go quite quickly. But if you're still start, if you're just starting out with drawing, don't rush it. Slow right, right down. It's more important that you get these directions and things right. So when you're working fast, you tend to get, uh, sometimes you get a little bit carried away and you forget about your directions. <laughs> that happens really easy. Especially like over here. Can you see there's like little subtle direction changes? So you, you need to take care of those. Otherwise, you're not going to get the, the lay of the hair correct. So don't be shy. Slow down. Get the get the directions right. It's way more important. And now I'm not turning my paper because I, I don't want to make you seasick. But you go ahead, turn your paper so that these flicks are in a in in a nice comfortable direction for your hand. So like over here, you've got this direction and you've got that direction. Just bring these lines of yours right next to each other. If you need to, you can even slightly overlap them. So Laurie has just bought a huge set of professional pencils at Arteza. Yeah, you get, a, you get really nice sets. Um, that have got a, a huge variety of pencils in them. I tend to use all the, the even numbers. Can you see that? 2H, okay, then H, H, B, you got B, 2B, 4B, 6B. I find the ones that are in between are just too close to each other. So what you can do is you use your, your even numbers if you've bought a nice big set like, like Laurie has. You, you, use them until the even numbers are finished and then you use the odd numbers of them instead so then instead of using a, a 4b you would say use the 5b or, or a 3b Alrighty, so can you see we've gone quite quickly into a into a hair effect? It doesn't look like a photo yet, but we've definitely got a hair effect. So that was quite easy so far, hey. And not just a hair effect. We've got a hair effect that looks 3D. It looks like 
this one is folding in and that one's folding in and this one's coming over those ones and so on and that's because we've got those tonal values already plotted in so it's between the these directions that we're getting right and those different tonal values is guaranteeing us already that bit of a 3d look to it see like here these hairs are really light but i'm still going ahead and i'm adding that hair texture in there because i'm not pressing hard i'll be able to come back later on and adjust and get those tonal values correct to where th where they need to be and i'll still have my my hair effect in place all right that's cool okay so before we now go too far let's quickly just do the skin and the clothing and stuff like that because all the hair that that we do is going to now overlap all of that so it's going to be difficult to squeeze it in afterwards so let's maybe move this actually i think for now i'm just going to do I'm just going to do that, just so that you can see that it's such a small little piece. It's pointless me now going. Create a whole new image here on the on the software. So I'm just adding that line in there because this little uh, bit of the blouse causes a shadow over there. So right up against the shirt or the blouse, it's going to be a, a hard edge. And then I'm going to just ease off on the pressure and just soften him out towards the left. Once I've done that, I'll just take the a blending stump. Just little circular motions and just soften out that shading. So it becomes a, a nice smooth but really quick shading. It, it's, it's not a long shading over there. Yeah, I think we'll stick with a stick with that, and I would do an even quicker one towards the right. Because what's happening there is, let me see if I can show that, demonstrate that. We've got now the the fabric, and that fabric is is has got thickness like that. So as it folds over like that, you've got this here has got a bit of a rounding to it. And that's what we're doing over here. We're just shading that rounding. Like that. And then same with the shirt. As it rounds away from us. And we know our light is coming from the left to the right. So this is curling away from the light. So I'm adding a little bit of graphite down there. And I'm just going to blend that in. create a super short, quick little little shadow over there even that's maybe a little bit too much so let me take my my needed eraser and just tap it out just to adjust the tonal value just a subtle little shading over there just to tell us there's a rounding and make it look a little bit a little bit 3d all right and then this side of her shoulder is darker than that side over there so let's maybe take a yeah let's start with an hb so this is now the chisel point that i'm using and just a quick little shading nice even overlapping strokes so i'm just adding tonal value there and then i'll soften it okay. 
So we don't really have it here today. But what I do look out for when I'm doing the, the, the skin stage is the hair will often cast, or more often than not, we're just lucky we don't see it today, will cast actually a shadow on the on the skin. In actual fact, why this is darker is probably that whole plait over there is now casting a shadow on this shoulder over here. But often it'll be a, a distinct shadow that it'll maybe end over there. So now is when you're going to put all these shadows in. Alright, so I put it in that direction and I faded it in that direction. So now let's use a different direction. It's also one of the things that I do to get a nice even shading. Just use different directions. Okay, we put that in. So now I've shaded it in like that. So now I'm going to blend it in the opposite direction. Again, overlapping strokes the whole time. And as I do, I keep checking the tonal value. Yeah, I think that's probably enough tonal value there for that. Um, let's take a look. A 14B is a really soft pencil. Um, Laurie, yes it is. A 14B pencil is really nice for getting those darkest darks in. But like here today, where you want to get those initial little flicks and stuff in, then a 14B would, is going to be too dark. You would use the 14B right at the end stages, just for that final darkest darks. And that's all. My darkest pencil is this guy over here, which is a a 9XXB. It, it's sort of a in between a charcoal and a graphite. So I use that for my real darkest darks. Um, Primrose is asking, is it fabric and not skin? This here is skin. And, and that there is 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 a uh, fabric. You can see it nicely on the on the color photo. You see that. So you've got neck and a bit of an open shoulder, and then there's a there's a bit of a strap over there. So another thing, while we got the the color photo, can you see here? You've got a little bit of a face that you can see over there. But if you look on the on the grey photo, it it sort of disappears on you, so that's why I like to reference from the the colour as well as the the grey photograph. The grey one gives you the the tonal values. Okay, so here I'm using a super light pressure to lay down this tonal value. And I'm going to run that all the way down the neck. Even though the light is coming from the from the left, so this is the lightest, I always like to just add that little bit of a shading on the edge. And that just shows that, that rounding like that. Can you see that? The minute I've put that in, this went from flat to, to round and having a bit of shape to it. Then as I'm doing this, I'm also looking for areas like that, where you've got these hairs um, have got gaps in between. So you're seeing a bit of the face in between those gaps. So I'm taking that face up into that area there, so that when I do work in the hair, you've automatically got those little darker bits already shining through. And, and can you see that's quite subtle? Um, that little shading 
Even though it's subtle, is enough to show that whole curl in the neck. Okay, that's cool like that over there. So I'm just checking this tonal value here is also still a little bit darker. There's just a few little subtle shadings in this vicinity. I'll even just use my finger to quickly blend that last little bit out. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art glasses on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. Alright, so here we've got that necklace. So let me put you down on this camera and I can zoom in on... Let's go to there. Then I can zoom in on that... On that necklace. You can see how I do it. Alrighty, let's go to there, and then, yeah, I think I'll just do, I'll just do that. And so to get the necklace like that is actually quite easy. I'm going to just take a, uh, just a sharp point pencil, yeah, let's maybe stick with the HB, but this I'm going to use a nice sharp point pencil. So can you see? The, the necklace has got links. So what I'm going to do is just create myself a really l rough impression of those links. So that's maybe that top edge. That's maybe the bottom edge. So it's just wiggles and squiggles. Now I'm going to take my eraser. And I'm going to lift out some highlights to it. So just little dabs and dashes. There's a light. secondary necklace over there so let's lift that out here yeah, just keep working out a few more little highlights on that one so now can you see it's lifted out some of those little sketch lines that I've done because not everything um, highlights equally So by erasing afterwards, you're lifting out some of those little little marks. And then there you go, you've got your impression of a necklace. So there's just a smaller one, so I'm just going to go 
just little squiggles because it's really small very thin little necklace that and that's all you need let's go to the wide view again and you'll see what I mean you see that <laughs> you don't have to spend hours drawing those little necklaces they just just suggest them it's good enough okay i'm just getting the camera back to where it was So let's go back to there. And now let's start working on getting those uh, those tonal values in the hair more accurate. So you have now been working a while and, and look what's happened. That Even though I've been turning it, the, the tip has um, flattened out a bit. So I'm going to give him another sharpen. Just to get him, just to get him nice and sharp again. And the same thing with the with the eraser. He's also flattened out a bit. So I'm going to take my knife. Let's get that in there to protect the drawing. So I'm going to take this with my knife. And at a, that 45 degree angle, I'm going to chop that point off so that we have a nice sharp edge like that. Can you see there? So this is now going to give me my, uh, my highlights. And that's going to give me my shadow. There you go. So you get different. You can use this. You can use where's that chopped off little piece of eraser that we had earlier. You can use just that standard eraser that you've chopped off there like that. Or you can use that edge over there like that. Then there's another thing that you can also use. You get a eraser pencil which looks like this which also works great and you, you sharpen him in a, just a standard sharpener so i quite like this guy as well his his eraser itself is slightly harder than these uh these uh tombow pen shaped erasers so these ones work really nice you do have to clean them constantly just like you have to with these ones um, but you get nice little sharp points on them so we'll be de definitely be using this at the later stage as well all right so now look at your highlights we've sort of put in your basics so now look for the the lightest bits for example over here can you see you've got this lovely um sunlight strip running along there some there and then here, all these lighter bits of here over there. There's some highlights running over there. So we're going to get them in. And as you do, you work in clumps. Right, so I think for now, I'll just use the, I'll just use the Tombow. And you're going to draw in exactly the same way as you were drawing with the pencil. So when I'm busy with this stage, what I'm looking for here, because you, you, you're not really erasing it quite as thin, as fine as what the pencil does, right? So now you really have to look at those clumps of hairs. And this here is where the value of not pressing hard in the beginning 
comes to life. Because that now allows you to do this erasing work over here. And you can use that same flicking motion that you did with the pencil. Instantly look how much more detail you've got. So think of it this way. With the pencil, you were flicking in from the dark to the light. Now you're flicking in from the light into the dark. These other little flyaway hairs over there, we won't worry about that yet. And as you're drawing this, you'll find that you your tonal value may be now let's say too light it's fine it's all just a little part of the figuring out what goes where so you're slowly adding more and more detail as you go and things get gradually more and more accurate as you go I seem to be running down the plat, so I may as well uh, just continue with it. So really look carefully. Where are these highlights? And if you see distinct, like, um, little clumps, like, can you see there's that little distinct clump over there? There's a distinct clump over there. Then you work it out. You lift it out. Remember earlier I said don't worry if it goes too dark. Look how quickly it is to get it back to the correct tonal value. Easy peasy. So if your eraser now goes blunt on you, don't be lazy. Sharpen him again. Because otherwise you're going to find that you, you're losing all your detail. And then you kind of wasted your time. You, you've defeated the object. And it only takes a few seconds just to chop off that tip again. It's really quick and easy. Okay, let's go to this. Now let's go to there, and then we'll go down to the array. So in this area, there's quite a few, most of the hairs going this direction. You've got a few running up there. Just for now, ignore those few that are doing their own thing. Just work on the mass. There's some nice little clumps over here, which I'm going to just suggest. So 
So I'm sticking to those original original directions that I plotted out. Yeah, just lift that a bit more over there. Ah, it's cool. Let's get rid of all that erasing, all the eraser dust. And now it's back to the pencil to to fine tune the fine tune the darker tonal values. So now you can press hard. Don't forget to keep turning that pencil and to keep checking your tonal values. For example, here's a little place that's a little area that's darker. So I am now leaving myself a little bit of a border there. Let's just do that. Alright, let's take a look over here. Here you've got that lighter bit and then the darker bit. So there, right there where those two meet, I'm going to add a little bit of a extra tonal value over there to really just bring that out. Then here we've got those gaps where you can see some of the face shining through. So I'll put in a few of those and then lift out a few highlights as well. Nice and dark in areas over here, so you can press a little bit harder and start getting those nice tonal values in there. And I'll also bring the where that and that meet, close that gap, even if you have to very gently color it in to get a bit of a shadow there. That's fine, do that. Can you see how this whole piece now is suddenly, is suddenly coming to life? All right, so now at this stage, what I also want you to look out for is that you've got sometimes little gaps where lighter hairs got two clumps that are that split like that. And then you've got that little bit of dark in between. You see there? For example, look over here. There's like that little bit of a little bit of a dark over there. To so work that in, it's sharp on that end, and then you'll thin out again as those hairs meet again. So it's a bit of a a shape that looks like this. Like that. 
I mean, this here is now dark. So it's broader here in the center, narrower, narrower. Kind of like a crack. <laughs> So these shadows also form clumps, same as the lights do. So there's a little darker clump. Then there's a darker area. There's a little darker clump over there. So in the end of the day, when you when you're done with this, your tonal values should be correct. So for example, over here, I can see this area needs to go darker. So I'm just continually continuing to add more and more flicks until this tonal value is correct. So I'll alternate if necessary. Between the eraser and the pencil. To make sure I don't lose all my details. And until I'm happy that I've got nice yeah nice details and i've got the correct tonal value so now as you can see it's not taking that long but you still you need to be patient when doing here Just so that you can fiddle enough until you've got your, your tonal value correct. These around this vicinity, there is a nice little darker bit shining through there. All this here can go darker still. And as I'm making it darker, I'm still looking for those little, those little clumps. Can you see there? There's quite a broader clump over here. shorter one see if you can see what I'm seeing okay this here still too light and so on
All right, I think this piece here is now slowly getting to that point where he's looking good. So let's continue. Let's take this guy over here, make him nice and dark. So flicking from the dark into the light. Okay, so look there, my tip of the pencil is starting to become blunt now. So I have to sharpen him. Um, the Carl thinks she's lost her original lines. If you've lost your original lines, just gradually work because they, they're not going to be far off, right? They're going to be. Um, similar or, or close to where they were. So what you do is just gradually, let's say, for example, you, you see you've lost that line over there, then just gradually adjust it. Come in, maybe lighten down a little bit. You know, push to push that line down and darken up a little bit lower below it and so on until you're happy that you've got that. You've got it in place. And having said that, in two seconds, this lady's going to turn her head and then that hair is going to be in a different place. So if you've got it close, it's good enough. For example, here, I can see my highlight is a little bit too far to the center, so I need to move him a little up like that. So I'm gradually pushing the dark that way, and I'm going to start lifting out some lighter guys on this side. To push the highlight up to that side, and now I'll be able to push those darks even further on. And just like that, he's gone from the center to over there. Let's continue on down here. So it's all about just adjusting those tonal values. And as you adjust the tonal values, look what's happening. You're adding more and more lines. So you're adding more and more detail. I'm just going to continue working for a short while, just so that we can get that that overall look. But you can see now, it already looks like you've drawn every single hair.
where we haven't. We've just done the impression. And then the color saying my tonal shading is never neat. My original tonal shading is never neat. It's always uneven and messy. Um, Nicole, is that when you're using the, the cloth? Just uh, let me know. All right, so here we do not have those uh, those flyaway hairs over there. So I think I'm going to start over here. Let's get these darks in. So there's quite a lot of darks over here, right? Eh? So I'm going to use a little bit of a coloring in effect because you can't see that much detail in the, in the dark. So you can go ahead and do a little bit of coloring in, but you can see I'm still doing it in that flicking motion so that it happens quite quickly. And here, because I'm flicking, that's always going to be darker than that over there. Because my pencil is now lifting up. Forming me that shading. And I still keep turning the pencil as well. Here's an interesting little bit. It's dark over here, then it goes lighter towards the outsides, to the left and to the right. So I'm coloring in the center and then flicking out of it to either side to make sure I get that, that little bit of a shading right. Okay, so here, here we're now right at the edge. So look what I'm doing. That hair is now continuous, right? It goes from here and it curls around, say, to the front. So just light little curves like that over the edge of the, f of the, of the hair. In the correct direction as though it's going forward. You see there? So mostly you're going to stop here where the edge of the head is but some of them you're going to take a little bit further and now you're going to start getting also extra detail in there because of that okay so Nicole has confirmed that's when when she's using the cloth that's fine Nicole don't worry too much Remember, that initial cloth stage is not about trying to get any kind of detail. You're never going to get detail with a cloth. All you're doing at the cloth stage is planning. So it's quite okay for things to be messy. I think if you go and rewind the video, then you're going to see, and you look at mine, you'll see it's, it's not neat. And then you take it and compare with the final drawing and then you'll see that it's not even necessarily that accurate either okay 
And that's okay. It's just a planning stage. In other words, you start off rough. And then as you go along, you're gradually adding more and more details and stuff. Gradually becoming more and more accurate. You're fine-tuning what you did in the beginning. It's quite okay to be off here in the beginning. Alright, so here I'm going to now start working in some of those little, those little flyaway hairs. I just want to get some of this dark a little bit lower down. It's still too, too light up over there. Otherwise these flyaway hairs are not going to have any contrast to stand out against. Let's just darken that up a bit more. That's fine. That's fine. Alright, so now you're going to take your eraser. And make sure you've got a nice sharp point. And now you're going to erase over the same spot several times and that's going to get you that that hair that's not doing his own thing Just gently erase over the same spot. He will lift out, I promise you. Let me just sharpen my eraser. Make sure you've got yourself a nice sharp point. And then, like over here, can you see there's like loose hairs coming across there? Once you've done this majority shading like that and you're generally happy and you can come in and you can lift out those individual hairs like that but you have to make sure that your eraser is nice and clean and nice and sharp and if it's not light enough after one stroke just gently come in and just go over him again if necessary again until he's shining through as much as you want him to shine through and it's these flyaway hairs that make it look more real and more accurate or more natural I should say not more accurate <laughs> more natural so you can now decide how many of these fly ways do you want to add
just a little bit too light in this little curling o in piece over there. It's got to be darker there. Alrighty, let's do one or two more plats and then we're done. Then I think you'll you'll have a good feel for you you or I think you already have a good feel, but then you can get a good overview of what it looks like when it's when when we're done. So I'm gonna work quite quickly now. So I think you, you know the technique already. And you're happy with that. If you're not, ask, ask a question and then I'll, I'll answer it from there and I'll show you. Okay, so I'm working on those clumps. And obviously the tonal values. There's a little cast shadow over there. Can you see that? Here it's super dark over here because that guy is casting a shadow onto that guy. And you can see it because that shadow ends quite sharp over there. Here's also quite a few gaps. between the clumps so I'll try and work them in so that they're quite visible like that and there's another the lighter lighter piece If you feel you're getting, you're getting lost when you're doing like plats and stuff like this, take your take your drawing. Let me just put it. I'm going to pretend as I'm I'm using my left hand as I'm drawing with my left hand, just so you can see what happens. So what you do is you, I'm working with that guy over there. So on my drawing, I'm going to keep my finger there, and then I'm going to draw. As I move up to here, I move my finger up. As I come to this guy, I'm working on that edge over there. And that way, instantly, when you look back to your drawing, if you're looking, f you look here, then you look there. You look here, look there. As you're com constantly comparing your tonal values, right? So as you do, you're instantly looking towards your finger. Then you never get lost, no matter how complicated this hair gets. You will see that in the next class when we do the, the curly hair. 
that becomes quite important. As I work, I want you to see how I'm turning the pencil. Because now you know the technique, so you can look at other things. <laughs> so notice how I turn the pencil every, every few strokes. Here's another little, small little shadow over there. So I'm working quite, working on those transitions between that and that. You distinctly want to see where the one sort of st stops and ends. So see how does it, is it, is it like here? Is it because you've got different colors? Or is it because you've got a little shadow being cast? And so on. Over here. For example, like here, here is because you've got a, a contrast between these highlights here and that darker over there. Right, so we've been nearly finished with the drawing. All I need to do really now is just show you those uh, those flyaway hairs. I'll just give this a quick little shading, then it'll it'll appear finished. Just a short amount of detail on this guy. So there's a little cast shadow over there again. There's a nice little gap in the clumps over there. There's a shadow being cast over there. Right, that'll do there. Let's finish up all this flyaway hairs. Those flyaway hairs are really important 
to add realism. Same as what we were adding little flyaway hairs here. On the sides, you also have flyaway hairs. So let's take a look. Here, things start getting messy. So from this vicinity here, I'm going to start working out all these little loose hairs, all with flicks. So I can see there's quite a bit of hairs running in this direction, and then they do this. And then you've got some loose guys curling out of here. So it's almost as though this is coming loose a little bit. So as before, it's really important that you get a nice sharp pencil. It must be nice and and get hairs that are in the middle of nowhere. Overlapping the area past the past the body. In the face. There's lots and lots of flyaway hairs there. There's lots of flyaway hairs here. Do so ones coming out from around this vicinity of here. Okay, go for there. Okay, so now it's back to the eraser, because there's lighter hairs as well, in between the darker ones. So remember to keep cleaning your eraser as you lift out these hairs. Because what happens is some of these some of these lighter hairs now are pick up a a highlight and and that's why they appear lighter. Everywhere there must be little little flyaway hairs.
few little darker ones. Yeah, you decide how, how, how messy you want the hair to look. But I think for now, we'll leave it at that for today. So let's take away... Let's take away the reference photo. And that's what we're left with. Yeah, I suppose if I wanted to, I could have added just a, a little bit of that in the background. So I'll just use the cloth and just quickly pop in some of those little details over there, just so that, that side of the paper is not empty. So I'm just quickly referencing from there. We don't quite know what it is, it's all out of focus. Yeah, there you go. It's just added a bit of, just a little bit of interest. Maybe there's something that's going through that side over there like that. <laughs> Just a few little scratches and scribbles. Alrighty, so if you've got any questions, go ahead, fire. Let me answer them for you before we end off the class. What we do, I'll just add one or two little details in. Well, uh, well, I give it a few seconds for you to type. One or two little fine tunings. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll call it a day on this guy. Because we're now at that point where you've got to decide how accurate do you want to be. Do you need it 100% accurate? Then you just continue working until you're happy with it. And it looks the same. Otherwise, yeah, that's good enough. You leave it like that. Alrighty, so if you have enjoyed the class, please uh, don't forget to to do that. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way I can notify you when uh, when a new class comes out. So just as saying your alarm for the class didn't go off. Um, hmm. YouTube usually sends out a you will we'll send out an email when there's a, a live class happening. Um, what I also suggest you do then is, is hop over to my website. The link is, let's see if I can get that up. The link is onlineartlessons.com. Then you can go and sign up there to my, to my email list. I, I email you early in the week to let you know what's happening. That gives you a gap to go to the website and download the, the template and, and get your sketch all ready for the class. Um, and then I email four hours before the time. So that gives you a nice little a nice little reminder to tell you that the class is starting. Um, yeah, so if you've enjoyed the class and you aren't a patron, please uh, consider doing that. You hop over to my website on anightlessons.com. 
when you're a patron, you get the the reference photos like we had today. We've got the, the you got the PDF where you can get the there's the color and the grayscale. There's the this the sketch template, so you can sketch all of that out beforehand. Then it makes it so much easier to work with in the live class. Um, afterwards, I edit this class and I cut out all the all the slow bits and and make it look all good so you can then watch that edited replay and often if there's a little piece that i need to finish like last week with the with that flower this little extra flower over here we didn't do that in the class so i'll show you how to do that in the in the replay when you're a patron plus of course then you get access to more than 250 other um pre-recorded classes which are exclusive you only get that on my website as well and it's very affordable i promise you go and look you'll be very surprised at the price so as a patron you not only get access to the to the handouts when you're uh, when you're in the live class you get access to all the extras plus every month i'm adding i add exclusive you know patron only ones on onto the website over and above these live classes all right so i'm just checking out and see if i've missed any questions i don't want to miss any questions all righty so diane is asking do i ever use a brush to smooth out the color um i do i do i use this guy over here just a, a regular bristle brush maybe i can hold him over there right just a regular bristle brush to, to do any smoothing out and you can do that here at any stage as well if if you need to get something a little bit more flatter maybe you've got say a little bit too much detail then you can you can easily use your use your brush just to soften him out or maybe you find that you you want to lift out some highlights you've lifted them out and now they're too bright now you can just take your brush and just go over them then they will darken up again and that gives you a gap to come back in and lift out the final highlights over that the more subtle ones so yeah 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 definitely i use the brush all the time um Ada's asking what kind of eraser I'm using. So I've, I've, I've used several, Ada. Um, I use the just a, a standard, old-fashioned eraser. But I'll often chop him up. So you've got little, just little pieces of it. Let's maybe just make that big, eh? So that you can see better. Let's go to there. So I'll often chop him up into little pieces like this then you can use that sharp edge to create um lift out just little details and so on then i use the this is the tombow mono the pen shaped eraser is my favorite and then i also i use the kneaded eraser which i i always pinch out into different shapes you know a chisel point or wh whatever shape that you want He's great for, for that, or a nice round, flat round edge for, for adjusting tonal values like that. And then also use this guy over here, which is a, an eraser pencil. To him, you just sharpen normally, it gives you a nice sharp point. So he works great for the hair. Alrighty, where were we? Over there. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Glad you enjoyed the class. Betty is asking, do I spray my drawings to set them? Never, never. And I'm going to tell you why yes it will set it but I've, I've just too many horror stories of you set it it's all good and then years down the line that whatever you've used to spray it with yellows on you 
and then you've got a problem. You can't take it off again. It's not like um, varnish on an oil painting, which if you use the right chemical, you can take it off without doing too much damage to the painting underneath. Once you've sprayed a piece of paper, it sinks into the to the tooth or the, the, the weave of the paper, and then you toast. You can do nothing about it. And once it's yellowed, it's yellowed. So, yeah. Um, what I suggest you do is take your, your drawing and you get UV filter glass and you frame your, your drawing behind the UV filtered glass. No fading whatsoever. <laughs> and then let me show you what I do for my, for my other, for my drawings that I'm not framing. I've got a file like this. So this is full of the first two pages, just spare papers and uh, where I put all my little, those scratch papers and so on. But this is all full of drawings. You recognize all these class, the class drawings. So I've got these drawings inside here in those plastic sleeves. And when I store this, it's closed inside the cupboard and it's standing like that. So essentially, these pages here are hanging. So they can't bend. They, they can't get any light. And they're perfectly safe. So th that's what I do for the guys that, that don't get uh, framed. So if that answers your question, Betty. All right, I'm not seeing any further further questions. So I think let's let's call it a day on that. Thank you very much for joining me in the class today. I really enjoyed it. It was great fun. It's not so difficult drawing the hair, right? Right, so in the next drawing class in two weeks' time, we'll do a bit more complicated hair. We'll do some curly hair. So that should be quite fun. Um, a little bit of a different techniques there. So quite a bit more to learn. As far as next week is concerned, next week we're going to be painting. Painting, and I'll show you what we're going to paint. So obviously, if you are um, watching this as a replay... It may be available already. So just go and take a look on the website. I think the easiest way to show you what we're doing next week is let me just go to the to the website. So we'll be doing that. Uh, it's like a surfer in the sunset. We'll be painting that in acrylics. So if you want to get access to that, yeah, the easiest way is a subscribe here on, on YouTube, but also head over to the website and then you can go and join the mailing list. And then I'll, I'll email you. You can join us for that class over there. It'll be great fun. I'm quite looking forward to it. It's a nice, it should be a nice beginner painting. Alrighty, have a wonderful week. See you next time.